Condemnation has continued to trail the bombing of a country home. Condemnation has continued to trail the bombing of the country home of the leader of Ohane Zendigo last Saturday. We have the spokesman of the organization with us on the program this morning. Mr. President has been back in Lagos, the commercial capital of the country, this time to commission projects that are important. We look at the prospects for these and their impact on the Nigerian economy. And we dive into the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. A very good morning to you. Welcome to another episode of The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. I am Kofi Bartels. As usual, we start with a trending topic right here on a trending segment right here on the breakfast this morning. And uh, important, very interesting uh, occurrences and happenings that Nigerians have been commenting on, especially on social media. What we do is we get into that space and bring you some of these stories and some of the comments, as well as provide analysis of this uh, very interesting happenings in a country and around the world. But let's start with one uh, interesting one. Of course, COVID-19 has been uh, uh, around with us in this country, at least since the year 2020, a year that I was really looked forward to in many regards, um, but unfortunately brought something that we had not expected. Uh, the Nigeria's federal government uh, has scrapped the PCR test for fully vaccinated travelers. And I don't know how many people had expected this coming. Um, in a statement, the government says fully vaccinated inbound travelers would no longer uh, be required to take a pre-departure PCR COVID-19 test. This was released uh, uh, in a statement by the federal government yes, on Monday, rather. Uh, it said, however, that um, they would be subjected to what, what is called the, the rapid antigen test at the airport. So it's not that they won't be doing any tests at all, but they'll be subjected rather, uh, instead of taking the a pre-departure PCR COVID-19 test. Now, when they get to Nigeria, they would have what you call the rapid antigen test at the airport uh, by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control within the arrival hall uh, of the airport. And this is coming free of charge, FOC, free of charge. And um, uh, the decision, now why is this happening? What, what is going on? What's behind this decision uh, that may have surprised not a few people? Uh, this decision was coming after the complaints by many travelers, uh, they were saying that um, uh, the cost placed on the PCR test was, was high. You know, this is what uh, not a few people had been complaining about. The cost placed on the PCR test was high. And um, this is what has been said for some days now. Um, the uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, um, uh, Boss Mustafa, uh, is also the chairman of the Presidential um, Steering Committee on COVID-19. And of course, over the past uh, few years, of, of, you know, since uh, this uh, COVID-19 became a reality and the government started re responding to it, uh, that Presidential Task Force had been, uh, uh, you know, having press conferences, you've been watching on Plus TV Africa. And so in this latest um, briefing by the Presidential Steering Committee in Abuja, he uh, revealed this uh, to the, the, the public. Now, he also added that passengers who are unvaccinated or partially vaccinated are mandated to take a COVID-19 PCR test 48 hours before departure um, or do a day two or day seven test on arrival noting that such passengers must pay for the test. So if you are coming into Nigeria and you are not vaccinated uh, or you are partially vaccinated, means you may have not taken your second job, then of course this, um, this news is not for you. You still will have to do the PCR test or the rapid antigen test, but the PCR test 48 hours before you leave your country of departure um, to come to Nigeria. And of course, when you do that, you can come in and move safely to your destination. But if you do not do that, then when you get to Nigeria, you have what you call a, a day two um, or a day seven uh, test, a day two and rather a day seven arrival test. And of course, the money 
is going to come from uh, in your pocket. So this is quite interesting. Um, not a few persons online expressing relief, expressing happiness uh, at this, you know, but there's, there, there have been several complaints about the cost, not just of the tests in Nigeria, but abroad, especially by those traveling to countries, you know, in Europe, you know, in, in North America, you know, we have people traveling to London and they've been complaining about the cost of these, these tests. And if you look at the United Kingdom, for instance, um, you've had Prime Minister Boris Johnson in recent times relaxing some restrictions um, uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned in that country. So a welcome development as far as travelers uh, to Nigeria, both Nigerians and foreigners are concerned. In these times when, you know, uh, you've looked at some of the comments online and uh, people have been talking about the economy and how difficult things are um, for the rest of us. So. Um, some good news, and we'll keep watching this space, but that is what we have for now, that the federal government has scrapped the PCR test for vaccinated travelers. No, vaccinated travelers, but there'll still be the rapid antigen test that'll be done, you know, in the airport, and government will pay for it. How does that sound? All right, let's move to the next um, uh, trending story, and this is quite a... Uh, Quite bizarre, but a, a good news, a feel-good story. You know, we, we, we've been lacking a lot of feel-good stories in recent time. You know, heartbreaking stories. We had the issue of Bami Shea. We've had other issues like that of, um, you know, um, Sylvester, Romani, and, and others. Uh, but this is a feel-good story because we hear um, that an Ondo businessman escaped from a kidnapper's den when the kidnappers fell asleep in a forest. This is, is something you hardly hear about, but it's a feel good story. He's identified as Idowu Shaba, and uh, he is supported to have escaped uh, from uh, the forest. He's a cocoa dealer, and um, he, he was together with an unknown lady, and they were kidnapped, according to the reports, on their way to uh, Ose, local government area uh, of that state on Saturday for a church program. They were going for a church program when the hoodlums um, ambushed them on the road and dragged them into the bush. Now, a source who spoke to the press narrated that after these two people were abducted, um, there was a demand placed of 10 million naira ransom, um, and this was demand was, was channeled to the victim's family before they managed to escape um, you know, the kidnappers fell asleep in the forest. According to uh, the source, the man who escaped, Shaba, he reported that the kidnappers were snoring heavily in the night. This is what he said. Let's take a quote. Um, he says, quote, after the abductors saw that the victims had slept off, they too fell asleep. So he said he seized the opportunity um, to carry their weapons and then use their sharp cutlasses to kill two of them and wounded another who ran away. He is also said to have taken the abductor's AK-47 rifles, cutlasses, and other dangerous weapons in their possession and used the opportunity to rescue the other lady, and they both escaped. It reminds us of the, um, the, the story in the Bible where um, some, some disciples were, <laughs> were um, in, the, in, in prison and they had to pray and praise, and then you know, they said what that they... Uh, the, 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 the prison doors were opened and they escaped. This is something you only read of uh, you here in storybooks, but this happened. Um, it's quite, quite, quite bizarre, but you know, it's a feel-good story that uh, someone kidnapped was able to uh, regain his freedom. Uh, it again paints you know, a picture of the security situation in the country uh, where no one um, you know, is safe. You have to really be careful. Every single person has to be careful out there. Fortunately, this ended with the um, victims escaping with their lives, and it's good to hear. It's good to hear. Let's go over to Cross River State. Uh, the Honorable Commissioner uh, for Health in Cross River State has come under fire. Um, of course, uh, Cross River State is really hot because the battle for the soul of the state as the elections approach between the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party has heated up after the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, moved from his mother party, the People's Democratic Party, a party on whose platform he became governor to the All Progressives Congress. And his, some of his commissioners and some of the aides and some of the House of Assembly members moved along with him. And for the first time in the history of Cross River State, we have a proper, proper battle between two political 
parties. For the first time, I would say, rather, not in the history of Cross River State, but since the return to democracy in this current republic in 1999, you have a proper battle between uh, two political parties, two major political parties, this time the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. But one of those commissioners who moved from the PDP to the APC with the governor is uh, Commissioner for Health and loyalist of uh, Governor Ben Ayade, um, Dr. Beta Edu. She's been embattled and embroiled in controversies, especially uh, during the ANSAS period, um, when, you know, Cross River State was accused of putting up false and fake figures of COVID-19 infection rates, and the state said they didn't have any single case of COVID-19. Um, in inspectors and officials of NSCDC were said to have been prevented from getting, getting access and doing their job in Cross River State. Um, she had battles with the Nigerian Medical Association and her professional colleagues in Cross River State and was almost, was almost losing her license to, to, to practice as a medical doctor but was able to um, escape uh, from that. And Beta Edu has done well for herself. Um, she moved from being the head of the primary um, healthcare agency in Cross River State to becoming commissioner of Cross River State. Um, now she is gunning for the position of national woman leader, women leader of the All Progressives Congress. And some of her previous statements have popped up. I mean, I saw one that was shared by the current chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Cross River State, Vinash Ezekim. He is also a former um, a commissioner in that state uh, under Donald Duke. Um, and and this, this post that was shared showed Beta Idu condemning President Mohamed Buhari, condemning the All Progressive Congress, condemning the federal government of Nigeria over NSARS. And so, of course, what they say is that the internet never forgets. And some of her screenshots, the screenshots of her posts on Twitter, her posts on, 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 on Facebook have been shared um, uh, by, by her political, <laughs> those who are not in support of her. And, you know, she has adversaries, of course, coming from outside the party, being the PDP in Cross River State. And she has adversity from within her party because she is vying with other people for the position of national woman leader. So she has had to come out to defend herself. And also, in that defense, she's also apologized uh, to the All Progressives Congress for supporting the ANSAS protest. You know, um, and she... Um, Confer, conf, she, she's been confronted, rather, by her past tweets um, as a position within her party is calling for a disqualification, you know, from contesting for that position we just talked about being the national woman leader, you know. Um, uh, so she is saying that um, she's totally and completely loyal to, to President Muhammadu Buhari. She's saying that she's totally and completely loyal to the All Progressives Congress. Uh, I'll just take a few words on what she said. I do acknowledge that a few of my spur of the moment tweets, and it's quite interesting, she describes it as spur of the moment tweets, an impulsive uh, reaction, she says, to the reports at the climax of the event, that's NSAS, may have been uh, indelicate and distorted my true position on things. I'm human, I'm a mom, and thus given to emotions, she said. However, she continued, I want to reassure and appeal to my progressive comrades who are expressing concern not to reduce my intentions and nuanced political views in the past to a couple of badly worded tweets. So she calls a condemnation of police brutality, a condemnation of the uh, uh, Lekki massacre, um, badly worded tweets. That's what she calls it, badly worded tweets. Um, she further, further went on to say that, you know, her support for the ANSAS protest, you know, was informed by past experience at the hands of Nigeria police. So she said a lot of things, you know, she said a lot of things. But, you know, the, the, the internet never forgets. And um, one will wonder why, um, of course, uh, Beta Edu, Commissioner of Health in Cross River State, is, is, is calling her condemnation of police brutality and a condemnation, you know, of attacks on protesters, peaceful protesters, at the Lekki target a few badly worded tweets. But of course, um, Nigerians have had a field day on social media, comments uh, pouring in from left, right, and center. Uh, it's most people saying that she's just changing her mouth, in quote, because of um, where she is right now. But 
I think apart from worry about her ambition to be national woman leader of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Beta Edu also has to worry now about whether she will be commissioner in Cross River State beyond 2022 because her governor, her principal, Governor Benedict Ayade, will learn in the next uh, few days, in the coming days, whether he will still be the governor of Cross River State. Interesting times in the Nigerian polity uh, you might want to add. Ad. Well, that's it uh, on the trending segment right here on uh, the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We have uh, more conversations coming in, uh, coming up. Uh, Tunde Kola, a legal practitioner, joins us um, up next as we look at the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. Stay with us.